Welcome back to Open Line tonight. I'm Carrie Sharp, joined by two gentlemen from the Comptroller's office. We have the Tennessee Comptroller with us, Justin Wilson. Hi. Thank you for being with us. And also Jason Mumpower, the Deputy Comptroller. So if this is your night to ask about uh, finances when it comes to Nashville, you all delivered uh, presentations just last week to the council. It was open to the public as well to talk about Nashville's finances as a whole, also the water department and rates having to go up. Um, you said people were surprised by the state we're in. They, they certainly were. Uh, and we're talking council members. And, uh, you know, uh, some of the council members were newly elected, and it's, mm -hmm. you can expect that to happen. Uh, but there's nothing new about this. It's, it's, you know, people hear what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. People talk about what they want to want to talk about, and they also talk about what they think the people they're talking to want to hear. And so we had, uh, we had a problem developing, and they just didn't want to talk about it, because you can understand this. this uh, if you look at uh, the chairman of the, of the uh, Budget Finance Committee, uh, Bob Mendez, he, he'd written blogs about this repeatedly. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you look at uh, our, current, our current mayor, when he was uh, head of the Budget Committee, he, he talked about this on the floor of the council. Uh, we had a council member from, you know, five years ago who, who talked about this repeatedly. Uh, we, we'd written letters. Uh, we, we talked to uh, well, the three mayors, mm -hmm. and uh, so this is nothing new here. What has been the reception so far from Mayor Cooper? Mayor Cooper, to his credit, recognizes that there's a uh, that there's an issue that he needs to address, and he's very uh, he, he appears to be very interested in solving the problem, which is very solvable, and I, I think he, he he appears that that he he wants to solve the problem, and I believe he will. He has said that he does not want to raise property taxes. He does not foresee doing that. Do you think that is going to be possible? Well, there are, also, there are basically two things, that, one of two things or a combination of the two need to happen. Either they need to have more revenue, and that does not necessarily mean raising taxes. You can raise revenue other ways, mm -hmm. or, or, or less expenses, or a combination of the two. Uh, I probably anticipate a combination of the two. We've seen that he was able to get uh, $12 million mm -hmm. from the, uh, the uh, Music, City, City, Center. Music mm -hmm. City Center, and that, that's one way to raise revenue. Uh, but, he, but the city of Nashville will need to either raise more revenue or cut expenses or a combination of the two, yes. I do yep. remember when Bob Mendez was here, he said, we're beyond the, the cutting the paper clips and you know those kind of expenses. Like, how, what, what kind of money are we talking about? Well, the immediate problem, the problem we have this year is very solvable. We're, uh, you know, we're talking in the neighborhood of perhaps $40 million out of a budget that's $2 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, the, you know, uh, the numbers are, are, not, are, are not dramatic. It, it is solvable. It's clearly solvable. Uh, the long-range long, the long range problems we've got are, are you know, needs to, are structural, mm -hmm. and they need to, to address that. The, they need, first of all, and most importantly, to be sure that they pay for the debt with what we call recurring dollars, with money we can count on every year. Uh, one of the problems we have uh, is that uh, Metro projects, this is our own estimates of having $3 million, a little more than $3 million in their debt service funds, which is used to pay the debt on the 30th of, uh, of June, which is the uh, end of their fiscal year. The next day, on July 1st, they're projected to have a debt of a debt payment of over a quarter of a billion dollars. Now one thing that's important to point out, you asked about property taxes mm -hmm. as a potential solution. <coughs> well in the current budget year it's already too late to adjust the property tax because property tax bills have already mm -hmm. been sent out and after those bills are sent out you can't go adjust the rate. So that as they are looking us to us for a solution in the current budget year, property yeah, tax is not a, not a solution. There are other types of revenue that can be raised. Property tax may have to be adjusted next year, but that cannot happen in the current year, which is where the most acute, the most immediate, the most urgent problems are. Very interesting. Let's go back to the phone lines right now. Let's see, we have Taylor on the line. Taylor, go ahead with your comment or question. Did you say Taylor? I sure did. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you for this program. You got two good guests there, Mr. Manpower. I've, uh, one of the best legislators we've ever had in this state. <laughs> so he's doing you. a good job in the comptroller's office over there as well. Uh, 
couple of questions I have. One is, um, other cities and even some states, when they've had uh, uh, shortfalls in water bills and electric bills and so forth, they quite often find out that there are certain industries uh, not paying a fair share toward uh, uh, their usage. Quite often, city itself is paying uh, uh, out of its uh, funds maybe a third of uh, the usage, of whether it be water, electricity, or whatever. So I hope uh, those kind of things are taken uh, into consideration as Nashville readjusts water and any, any other things. Um, one of the problems here is nothing new. It may be new, uh, newly discovered, but when you have people running cities that have no business background, uh, no interest in knowing the uh, uh, weeds of uh, what's going on, letting someone else like Rich Reebling, uh wiggle the dollars for at least the last 10 or 15 years here and nobody knows anything about it except he and maybe the mayor telling him to get this done no matter how what it takes that's what's got us into this kind of trouble and uh, they have been warned by other candidates Mr. Freeman I thought for sure was going to run for mayor he had a very good uh, uh, editorial in one of his publications about the finances of this city, and I thought for sure that was his introduction to running for office, but instead I think it told him he had more than nothing to do with the uh, current uh, situation over there, and so he uh, announced he would not be running. But uh, again, uh, the council uh, these members change so often with this uh, thing we passed. None of them are there long enough to get to know anything about the financing of anything. Yeah. Uh, so Taylor, I want to hop that, back to that, your... That's a problem we'll have to live with until we ever get around to changing it back. Thank you. Taylor, thank you. And I do want to hop back to where he started because I know we had the same call a couple of weeks ago, I think, when um, when somebody else was on. It may have been Bob. It may have been uh, Vice Mayor Schulman. Someone asking about the water rates. And, you know, we, we've lured companies in with tax increment financing before. And I think that some people think, and I don't know if it's true or not, that we've also offered deals on utilities. He's like, we'll set up the water for you guys. You don't have to pay this part of it. Has that been happening that you know of? I, I would say that, that we're not immediately aware of, of those types of things. A lot of times when those uh, incentives are offered to businesses coming in, it will be infrastructure like they might set up the, the water lines and, and things like that more so than water service. You know, again, the Water and Wastewater Financing Board ordered a comprehensive rate study. A lot went into that. Uh, I know that questions rightfully and, mm -hmm. and, and logically exist in people's minds. I do want to be very complimentary of the Nashville Water System staff, the director, and, and the folks that we work with, with regularly uh, are good people who I think are, are doing a good job and who want to see this fixed as much as anybody. Uh, I assure you that we look at everything we can. Uh, we're not necessarily responsible for auditing each customer's use, uh, but I do think that is something that the water system looks at. I do think in it, particular it's something they've looked at lately, and so I do think that the citizens of Nashville can have some great degree of confidence in the new rate structure being proposed. And we and, should mention... And, and yeah, let me ahead. say, during the commercial break, we actually, <laughs> we actually did a little bit of research hearkening back to Tony's yeah. call a few minutes ago. And and, and we learned, gratefully, gladly, that not only is Nashville's water rate not one of the highest in the nation, it's one of the lowest in the nation. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense, particularly because it has been adjusted in nine years. And I believe still, with the increase proposed, it will be one of the more uh, uh, affordable rates in the nation, particularly for a large city like Nashville. You all told the, um, the council members last week and those who were at the meeting that 
the state can take over Nashville if this problem is not addressed, it's not something you look forward to doing or want to do, not something that's pressing right this moment. First of all, what is a timeline? How, how, does that, how is that decision made? Well, first of all, uh, this is something that we have absolutely no desire whatsoever to do in any circumstance. Nashville has got a proud history and it needs to be independent and keep its own and determine its own destiny. Uh, we do have the statutory authority to, uh, to take over the uh, finances of the city. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if in fact uh, Metro doesn't deal with the problem, then, then we will. But I, this is something I do not foresee at all uh, under any circumstance. Well, uh, I do not foresee at all. It's, it's simply a question of political will of the, mm -hmm. city, of the Metro Council to make some, some tough decisions to, uh, to do what needs to be done to make sure that Nashville continues to have a fabulous economy, a fabulous growth, and, uh, and, and continue this way. Um, you know, we have a new council. Uh, as a practical matter, they took office uh, on September 28th or October 1st. Uh, the mayor took, uh, t uh, was sworn in on those, uh, uh, I guess, in October, uh, on September 28th, and they had a finance director. He, he took office on the 15th of October. Uh, we want to give them an opportunity to come up with a corrective action plan and it's my understanding is that they are planning to present that uh, together with the uh, chairman of the uh, budget committee, uh, uh, Bob Mendez, on the uh, in in December. Uh, we want them to succeed. We want them to to determine exactly what what they think is the right right future for for uh, for Nashville, and and we will work with them to to accomplish that. Yes. With the understanding that a takeover is not what you are looking to it do. It is in no one's interest for that to happen. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, you that. You did say if that were to happen, you all would start with layoffs and cuts mm -hmm. to services. So does that mean going forward, if Nashville is in control of itself, those things still need to happen to make this budget work? Well, there are all sorts of ways to balance the budget, and they're the ones who really should determine that. They don't really want someone in the capital to sit down and tell them what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add to that as well? Well, I was just going to hearken back to exactly what the comptroller said at, the, at sure. the Metro Council meeting last week when talking about the possibility of taking over Metro Nashville. He said in particular that he would rather teach irregular Portuguese verbs <laughs> to a raccoon than he had pulled out of Mill Creek. Now, gotcha. that's, that a bold, that's a bold way of saying <laughs> the last thing we want to do is take over Metro Nashville. Mm -hmm. State law does give, give extraordinary authority to the Office of the Comptroller of the Treasury. It's nothing we want to do. And uh, we believe, again, that it's nothing that we're going to have to do. Uh, we believe that the, the men and women of the Nashville Metro Council and the mayor's office are going to work together to get themselves out of this problem in short order. Well, I think it's fair to say that both the uh, finance director and the chairman of the, bu uh, of the budget committee are very experienced in dealing with mm -hmm. issues like this. I <coughs> uh, have a high degree of confidence. Uh, the, mayor has, the mayor understands finances. I believe it could be done. I think it should be done. I think it will be done. But we've also had other mayors who have understood finances or should understand, right? And is it fair to say they've kind of passed the buck? Well, I'm not in the business of supporting fingers. Okay. I can take that. I think that, I think that what we're focused on now is not where the responsibility uh, or, or who was responsible for getting us into the mess. What we're focused on right now is who is responsible for getting us out of the mess. It's about looking forward. About looking forward. And the men and the women of Metro Council and the mayors, uh, right now, they are the ones in charge ones. of getting us out of this mess. And uh, we're helping them all we can. Uh, we want uh, Nashville. Nashville is an economic leader for the state of Tennessee mm -hmm. and we want them to be on the right track and uh, it's not about taking over it's about helping them right now and that's what our visit to Metro Council was about last week that's what we're about here tonight and uh, by working together I think we're gonna get out of this mess okay we have a few more callers on the line but we have to take a quick break so Lucy and Marilyn stay where you are we're gonna get to you right after this